on. <laughs> hey, moron! Dude, look at me! I'm the whoa whoa boy, dude. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's had a great weekend. It is Sunday, and I am so happy. Um, as much as I love being in here in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, home of Micah Parsons, and in the middle of Eagle territory, I can't wait to get my ass back home. I can't wait to get back to the red brick house, get back to my studio today, five o'clock Eastern. We'll be doing our live stream. If you are a channel member, I will have the link to be able to be part of the show at five o'clock Eastern today in the community tab. So be sure to join us there. So let's kill the, the music here. This is interesting, okay? You know, I am, you know, I'm Joe the fan. I'm Joe the fan that's here on YouTube. I'm blessed to have a couple of YouTube channels and to have a few people that actually like to watch. Some people take this stuff a little too seriously where they figure that everybody has to hate. You're a Cowboy fan, so I have to hate you, this, that, and the other. Listen, we need to stop the hate and start working together, people, okay? The reality is, is, Eagle fans, Cowboy fans, it's fun when we get together. Talk some smack. You know, sometimes you guys win. Sometimes, most of the time, we win with Dak Prescott and stuff. You know, it's your opportunity to be able to be one up on you. You know what I'm saying? Talk some smack and everything else. You know, Philly 500, he's my boy. There's no way there'd ever be punches thrown between the two of us. You know, if somebody were to mess with Philly 500, I'll go to the mat. You know, I, I got the man's back. Can't stand his team. Would like to trash them, talk smack about them, and everything else. Um, because that's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. That's the way it's supposed to be. And some people are a little bit crazy out there. I ain't going to lie to you. Some of y'all are a little crazy. And the thing that's crazy, even with, the talking head. Some of this stuff is brought on because of the perception and what you are exposed to. If you hear something enough times, you'll believe it. The Cowboys, contrary to popular, I know they're not having a lot of success in the playoffs, but I look at it and say, you know, the Buffalo Bills got one step further than we have in the last five years or so, right? They went to the AFC Championship game. It's not a Super Bowl. It's not a Super Bowl. There's 31 teams at the end of the year that were a disappointment. It doesn't matter if you were the last team or the second to last team. You didn't succeed. But to be able to say you won 12 games in a row, three years in a row, that's not an easy thing to do. Yes, you need to even take that a little further. But to literally say that the Cowboys are trash, that they suck, that their quarterback is is a nobody. Um, bro, we've seen guys out here getting paid that ain't winning 12 games. And we'll make up excuses for them, but hold Dak and the Dallas Cowboys to a standard that's damn near impossible that you don't hold others to. And so people out there, sit here and say, well, Dak Prescott is a garbage quarterback. He sucks, you know. And I don't know if you've thrown like a TD pass in the NFL or not. It ain't easy. When you talk about people who can play NFL quarterback on the whole planet, I don't care if you're the four-string guy and make a roster. You're still an elite company. And to be somebody who's been able to be there for eight years to be on the precipice of Cowboys records to after having a year where you broke your thumb and had a disappointing season that still ended up at 12 and five to bounce back and have seven, six less interceptions and like 11 more TDs. 
that looks and says, that's pretty good. To have a young guy who is 11 sacks every year to start his career, it's pretty good. To have some of the players like you have, like a Deron Bland, who ended up leading the league in touchdown pick sixes. Now, he's still got work to do and room to grow. But, you know, you could say the same about Diggs when he led the NFL in interceptions. He became a better corner the next year with less of them. To have these key pieces like a Tyler Smith and a Zach Martin and potentially some up-and-comers and maybe uh, BB and maybe Guyton. It's not an awful team that, you know, it's, it's not, oh, and don't forget C.D. Lamb, who led the league in yardage. they are good pieces on this roster. There's good players on this team. And for everybody to say, trade Dak and get rid of his ass, get rid of um, Micah Parsons and get rid of C.D. Lamb, it's the coach's job to figure out the strengths and the weaknesses and how I can best use those skill sets to become a champion. That's the bottom line. How to motivate them when shit hits the fan. That's the failing here on the team. So when somebody says Dak Prescott and puts him up there, people roll their eyes. CJ Stroud yesterday. Oh, no, I'm tripping. Let me go. Are I'm you going. tripping? So, oh, yeah. Final <laughs> five. I know what I'm doing, dog. Uh, <laughs> Mahomes, Lamar, myself, Dak, Joey B. Uh, no, nah, he ain't really played oh, last year. Oh, off a And then Hurts. Dak, yeah, bro. Dak, 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 that boy. Y'all not gonna say that because he ain't, he ain't won the big one. You, you said Matt, Matt three seven. Oh, yeah, yeah, Matthew, Matthew, Cowboys thing. Well, it's Cowboys thing. Well, you gonna put Dak Prescott in there over Joe Burrow? Yeah, I got. I'm saying off last year, dog. He ain't playing all year. He got hurt. Well, we can Burrow find somebody. My, Burrow, one of my favorite players. We can find somebody. I'm out of my game after Burrow a little bit. Like, Why you need Burrow? Burrow? I fuck with that. Stuff. Cowboys. <coughs> oh, even the Cowboys, that blue, they don't bro. like each what? other like that? I ain't know all that. What? I ain't see. I don't be knowing all that. Dak tough, bro. I'm Dak is one of the most accurate quarterbacks in the world. Y'all got to see them in the world. Yeah, we playing. Oh, my God. The battle with Texas. You going to take care of Monday night. Yeah, take care of that for me, man. In Dallas. You heard him say, anybody, anybody but Dak. But if you, uh, uh, come on, come on, give credit where credit is due. He said off of last year, Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow was was injured all season. Was injured all season. You can't say Justin Herbert, his he, he was ass-ass last year with Kellen Moore. And I'm not sure that Jalen Hurts was great last year, but I'll, I'll take that one. Maybe you switch out Josh Allen for Jalen Hurts in there. But how can you take a guy who was an MVP runner-up, who led the league in touchdown passes, had some of the fewest interceptions, and say, oh, no, he wasn't top five for last year? Come on, people. Give some credit where credit is due. You hold Dak Prescott. If Dak Prescott was with any other team, we would be praising him to high heaven and saying, look what he's done in his career. He's almost at 30,000 you know, uh, yards. He's right there behind Troy Aikman. He has a chance to pass Tony Romo for the Cowboys record. Come on, people. Come on, people. Now, let me say congratulations to um, the Dallas Mavericks getting to the NBA Finals. If you are Jerry Jones right now, you should feel like, I can't believe that all of these sports franchises that I set the standard with of being champions with Jimmy Johnson, that they've all done circles around us, that we are a sports capital in the country, just we're kind of like the ghetto right now. We're the side of town that you don't really want to go visit. You know, you want to see the Rangers. Oh, man, because that, 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 that neighborhood has come up. I hope that neighborhood is up there. The Stars, oh, man. And the Dallas Mavericks, shit, man. That's like Brentwood. But then you have to go see the Cowboys 
And that's the ghetto. It's kind of run down. It needs some upgrades. The neighborhood is kind of rough. The Cowboys used to be everything. And Jerry Jones needs to get back to that. And Jerry Jones has a perfect opportunity to still change the narrative. To still, as a team that has won 12 games in a row, three years running. You got a little bit of cheddar there. You got $12.5 million. You got the potential of getting another 10 just by getting CD under contract and changing the narrative, if nothing else. And you've got some poker chips in four compensatory picks for next year that you can make some moves to supplement this team. It's not a whole lot that you need. It's not, it's not a whole lot, Jerry. Get yourself another couple of defensive linemen to help stop the run. Get yourself maybe another running back. You do those things with your roster that they're already saying is, you know, ninth best, you could really do some damage. And I don't understand why he doesn't. He says, you know, if it was just about money and writing a check, I'd write a check. Well, I'll write some checks. Write one to C.D. Lamb and get some more cash. Write some to a couple of couple of guys. Go out and get my, my buddy Calais Campbell. Go out and get my, you know, and add him to the mix. Uh, just, just add Calais, just do that. And we'd go off. All right, so before I get ready to pack the rest of my shit up to get out of here, I can't wait to get out of here and get back home. Cowboys in a massive bind. Let's listen in. No, they have been less than proactive regarding locking up Dak Prescott in the final year of his deal. Uh, Mikey T, what kind of bind are they in at this point? What should the Cowboys be doing? Hannah, they're in a massive bind. They gave Dak Prescott a blank check. Let's just cut through it all. At the end of the season, they cannot franchise Dak Prescott. They did not draft his replacement. They have a really good team, and Dak was second <coughs> in the league in MVP voting. So basically what you're saying to Dak is, what is it going to take to sign you? And I think he's going to blow away all records from an average per year and guaranteed basis. Yeah, uh, to Mike's point, the original sin here was letting Dak play out his contract, not getting a deal done uh, the first mm -hmm. time around. And now they're in a position where there really are two not great options. One is to, as he said, uh, give Dak an enormous contract because of all his leverage. The other is to move on after this year, in which case you'll be in quarterback purgatory. My preference would probably be the overpay, just because I don't think they have any good options, partly of their own volition. But uh, there are no easy choices for Dallas because of the decisions they made years ago. Let's talk about those Cowboys. Their defense led the NFL in takeaways during Dan Quinn's three seasons as their defensive coordinator. They did so by pressuring the quarterback. Under Quinn, Dallas pressured opposing QBs on 36% of their dropbacks. That was the highest rate in the NFL. But with Quinn leaving Dallas now, head coach for the Commanders, Mike Zimmer takes over as the Cowboys DC. And Zim talked about coming into this well-established unit, and he said, and I quote, usually when I come in, the defense is not good, you know? They're pretty darn good. So it's a little different for me because we have to advance some of the things we were doing good and try to improve on the things they weren't doing so good. But for the most part, they played pretty darn good. And we're going to try to accentuate that, maybe a little more technique-oriented, maybe a little more disciplined. Some of those things, close quote. Mm -hmm. All right, D. Woody. Uh, we know Zim, right? He is going to demand preparation. He is going to demand discipline. This is a defense that was top three in penalties last season. How different do you anticipate this defense is going to look? Yeah, I think there's, there's definitely going to be some different variables with this defense, particularly I think in how they attack 
uh, blitz-wise. I think the one thing about Mike Zimmer, he likes to run a lot of simulated blitzes. And when you talk about Dan Quinn's defense, that's usually a one gap, get up the field. They like to rush the quarterback and stop the run on the way to the, on the, way to the quarterback. So I think when, when you talk about Mike Zimmer, you're going to see a guy that is going to demand a little bit more out of his guys. Guys going to have to think a little bit more about the things, the play calling that he's going to throw out there. And, you know, I think that's going to be an adjustment for this Dallas Cowboys defense because under Quinn, they didn't want to do a lot. They didn't want to have a lot of complicated schemes because they wanted guys to not think as much and just get up the field. So there's going to be some differences uh, in, in this new scheme that they're going to run in Dallas. I thought that quote was really interesting from him. Mm -hmm. He talked about the things they did well and accentuating things they didn't do well. Um, <laughs> As Damien said, Mike's known for his simulated pressures, the infamous double-A gap blitz in Minnesota. Uh, yeah, I think we'll see some of that, and I expect that the Cowboys will continue to rush the passer at a high level. That's not what they didn't do well, though. What he is probably alluding to or talking around uh, was the fact that they really struggled to defend the run, particularly in the later part of the season. Now, it should be noted, a lot of those struggles were due to personnel. In fact, when we look at their... Uh, the groupings that they use, Dallas uh, used their base defense, meaning when they just had four DBs on the field, less than 4% of the time. They were living in dime with three safeties, in large part because they did not have line. They literally ran out of linebackers on this team to injury. So now you bring in Eric Kendricks, who's a venture veteran. Um, Overshone, who was a, a rookie last year and lost the season due to injury. He was a third-round draft pick, will play. I think we're going to see a little bit more base defense, and I think it's going to be incumbent upon Zimmer to get them to play the run better from a technique perspective as well. You know, not all first-year coordinators are created equal. Through the lens of Mike McCarthy, I'm telling Mike Zimmer, we have about five minutes to transition here. I don't want to hear, like, for the first month of September, we're getting the kinks worked out or we're trying some new calls Mike McCarthy is under enormous pressure. We all know that. He's in the last year of his contract. So from a head coach perspective, we're going to do what we do well, maybe tweak a couple of things, as you guys mentioned, like simulated pressures. But by and large, we have to be great from day one. And I agree with Mina that Eric Hendricks is a consequential acquisition because they were really undersized at linebacker towards the end of last year. That is the truth. Maybe Stephon Gilmore is signed as a depth at corner. But this has to be a defense that hits the ground running. Uh, by the way, Micah Parsons has not been there. Not last week, not this week for OTAs. Did show up for media day, but no practices. It's probably worth noting. There you go, good people. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. We'll be on the road in hopefully about an hour or so. And I'll see you at 5 o'clock Eastern. The background will definitely look a lot different because it'll be back at the Red Brick House. Peace out.